becoming more problematic. There is a growing concern over the rising of human rights abuse and political instability across the African continent. The African Parliamentarians Association for Human Rights is a network of young, independent, non-partisan African parliamentarians that is committed to the promotion of democracy, good governance and human rights in Africa. The aim of uh, uh, AFRIPA is to develop programs in response to some of the challenges that are experienced in Africa today. But joining us now from Asidos in Parliament is AFRIPA's Steering Committee's Chairperson, Ngaba Yomzi Kwangwa. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you so much indeed for coming through. Good afternoon to you, Palisa, and good afternoon to the viewers at home. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you so much indeed. Now, before we talk a bit about the meeting taking place on the 7th, I think it's only fair that we look into the recent attacks on uh, foreign nationals here in South Africa uh, and also the, the, the gender-based violence that we have seen, the incidents that we have seen lately. Your take on that? Well, firstly, about the xenophobic violence, we'd like to take this opportunity to condemn in the strongest possible terms the incidents of xenophobic violence uh, that have been taking place around the country over the past few days. Uh, it's important for people that, especially the guests who are attending a number of events in South Africa, including the World Economic Forum, that it's not the actions of South Africans do not represent our values and principles as a country, even uh, the values that we espouse as a nation. But the issue here is, is much broader than what we look at. For instance, I think that South Africans don't understand first and foremost the role that uh, our fellow African brothers and sisters played in our struggle for liberation. The contribution that was made firstly by frontline states, but by Africans in general. It's a, it's a, it's a weakness of our education system which teaches us more about Africa than it, rather about, about Europe rather than, than it does about, uh, about Africa firstly. But the issue that has to do with xenophobic violence arises out of socioeconomic issues that were highlighted in one of the reports, I think it's the APRM report, a country report on South Africa, which flagged these things way back in 2007. It said from a policy and law legal point of view, South Africa has to deal or tackle the, the, the competition that exists, the unfair competition as they put it, that exists between illegal and undocumented migrants in South Africa and South Africans in general. And that is a matter that that report recommended that it had to be dealt with in policy and in law, quote, unquote. And then moved to 2015, where the South African Parliament also had an ad hoc committee. They established an ad hoc committee to deal with xenophobic violence and to try and come up with measures that could, could seek to address this issue. And one of the issues that was raised in that report by Parliament was to say that uh, because there are many undocumented migrants in South Africa, the private sector tends to exploit them and tends to pay them less salary per rate per hour than they would generally pay South Africans. And they make uh, our, our African brothers and sisters work uh, extraordinary hours. It's an issue that needs to be addressed because even the report itself says it creates a lot of resentment. Now, it's not a question of South Africans in many instances, which is unfortunate. We mustn't uh, deny the fact that there are incidents of xenophobia that are taking place in the country. But it's almost like it's the private sector that is pitting one African against another on the basis of what does that were unilaterally decided by our former colonial masters. But the other question that we need to look at broadly is to say some of the African leaders, they are, they are continuing to, 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 to misgovern their countries. They are continuing to run despotic regimes. As a result, their citizens run to countries that are more stable around the African continent. And when incidents such as what is happening in the country in South Africa right now happen, they are the first ones to condemn when they are part of the problem. It's a continental and, and regional issue that needs to be dealt with, say, for example, at AU level and regional level, to say, what do we do about those countries? But at the same time, here in South Africa, the issue has to do with, uh, we would like to help all Africans, for example, everyone who is running away from their countries due to political challenges there and a whole manner of challenges, but there's only so much that we can do. We have, to some extent, tried to find a way of managing our borders while we're busy educating South Africans about the role that Africa played in our liberation struggle, but how we can peacefully coexist as Africans, how we can get our people to understand that Africa is for Africans. But that is for all the stakeholders to do. It can't just be expected that one stakeholder would be able to provide solutions that would serve as a panacea to African problems. The other issue here, it is also linked to the xenophobic violence, is that I think as a nation we need to, one, once Matibo once put it as, the reconstruction and development, the RDP of the soul. 
there's something seriously wrong about us Africans, because you know South Africans in particular, that makes us uh, to, 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 be, to have that propensity to violence on issues, especially when it comes to women and children in our country. Mm -hmm. Women and children that we should be protecting in our country are experiencing extreme and ha extraordinary levels of violence against mm -hmm. their male counterparts in South Africa. But one of the issues that beyond just condemning, you know, politicians and other leaders of, in civil society, we like to condemn, but beyond condemning, in the strongest possible terms. What are we doing as a nation? Are we changing laws? One of the issues that we, we highlighted in Parliament was to say, we perhaps need to look at all the gaps and the weaknesses of the legislations that deals with trying to put together punitive measures that deal with people who do perpetuate violence against women and children in our country. Do we make sure that those people are languishing in jail? Others are talking about bringing back the death penalty. Perhaps because this matter is a national crisis, yeah. we need to have those discussions around the table and, and propose concrete solutions that are beyond just platitudes during speeches and press conferences. That is exactly what many people are saying, that they're tired of hearing about the government condemning those incidents. Now, back to the meeting taking place uh, uh, on the 7th and the 8th of September. Uh, it, it's expected to include the dignitaries from the different countries. The DRC will be there, Kenya, Malawi, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, Cameroon and South Africa. Talk to us about that particular meeting and what is it aimed at? The meeting really, because we're the steering committee of Africa, firstly we're going to review the work that we did in 2018. Many would recall, South Africans would recall that we embarked on a number of programs, solidarity missions, for example, Ethiopia, we also undertook a fact-finding mission to the Democratic Republic of Congo in, in October last year when we wanted to assess the state of readiness of that country to hold the elections which are going to take place in December. Uh, and a number of other programs that have taken place over the past couple of uh, the past few 16 months. Now what we do is to reflect on that, look at the strengths and weaknesses, but also consider what are the topical and human rights issues that affect the continent and be able to come up with strategies that are going to tailor make responses to regional challenges. Because when you are a continental network, what you must do is must look at challenges that exist in a particular region, but be able to take resolutions around those issues and map a way forward to say, say for example, in 2014, these are going to be our areas of focus. One of them, for example, which we have been talking about informally, is to deal with the issue that has to do with freedom of religion or belief in, Eritre in Eritrea, because you'll recall that even though political leaders were released uh, for example, in the, in the arranged political agreement between Eritrea and Ethiopia, but most religion, religious prisoners are still languishing in jail. But we have to consider the state of democracy in the continent in broad terms to say whether the situation has improved or whether it has taken a turn for the worse. If it has taken a turn for the worse, what are some of the interventions that we as a committee can do working together with our members who are on the continent? You will recall that Africa is about... 100, approximately 100 members of parliament were affiliated to this informal network. And we use our experience, obviously, in parliament, yeah. our experience as chief whips to say, these are some of the interventions we can make and get support from other resource people to say, what are some of the inter interventions and ma amendments to laws in their countries or changes to rules and regulations that they can make in order to ensure that human rights are indeed experienced and enjoyed in their countries. All right, we'll leave it at this for now, but surely we'll have you back in studio to talk about the outcomes of uh, this particular meeting. Many thanks to you. I'm much obliged to you. Thank you kindly. All right. Mabayom Zikwangwa is uh, the AFRIPA, that's the African Parliamentarians Association for Human Rights uh, Steering Committee's chairperson, joining us now live from our studios in Parliament.